Hey, welcome back to the Ping Pong Flick Show. My name is Chris Wong. I hope you all had a wonderful, wonderful Merry Christmas and you got everything that you've always wanted or at least wished for this year. And I hope that you actually got to watch Wonder Woman 1984 on HBO Max or in theaters because it launched uh, this past weekend. Um, and I'm really happy for the movie. If you see my review, I do love it. I do have some issues, in particular, like the action scenes, but all of that will be revealed uh, in my spoiler discussion that I'll probably release later on. Um, in that case, I want to reserve the members' comments and questions on that Wonder Woman 1984 review for the spoilers review because you know there's probably going to be some spoilery stuff within those comments, so I'm, I'm trying to leave that out. So if you haven't watched it yet, especially if you're an international, you know, of the the review that I have on out now. It's safe. It's pretty safe. I'd say it's non-spoilery at all. It may be confusing for you if you don't know anything about the movie. Maybe. I don't know, but I think I did a pretty good job at it. Um, but check that out if you want to hear my thoughts on that. But the spoiler discussion will be later on. But there is some exciting news today. But before we get into that, I have to thank my newest member of the Ping Pong Flick Show. I cannot say your name. I'm sorry. I think I'm, I'm going to butcher it. It's, is it Josu Val? Josu Val? I don't know. I'm pretty sure you're going to tell me in the uh, down in the comments down below. But thank you so much for joining as a member of the Ping Pong Flick Show. I truly appreciate it. And I thank you all subscribers and members as well. All right. Well, on to the show. The biggest news, breaking news today is definitely has to be Wonder Woman 3 has been officially been greenlit by Warner Brothers. That's right. It's coming over on Variety, but Warner Media themselves has put out their own article. Um, I'm going to flash this up, though, and read the Warner Media Press, though. This is where it's all coming from. So I was going to get a little bit about uh, Wonder Woman 1984 as well, how well it did, uh, and that's why this decision was made. Warner Brothers Pictures fast tracks development on Wonder Woman 3. Wonder Woman 1984. Well, let me get back to that. Today, Wonder, Warner Brothers Pictures announced that it will fast track development on the third installment of the Wonder Woman franchise to be written by Patty Jenkins, who is attached to direct and starring Gal Gadot. Wonder Woman 1984 easily conquered the holiday week and exceeding box office projections as the top post-pandemic domestic opening weekend for any feature film this year. With $16.7 million in box office, Wonder Woman 1984 took in an estimated $36.1 million globally from 42 markets in release this weekend, including U.S. and Canada. This takes the international running queue to $68.3 million and the worldwide tally to $85 million. The film has been welcomed by fans with an overall cinema score of B+. The announcement was made today by Toby Emmerich, chairman Warner Brothers Pictures Group. This is what he said. As fans around the world continue to embrace Diana Prince, driving the strong opening weekend performance of Wonder Woman 1984, we are excited to be able to continue her story with our real-life Wonder Women, Gal and Patty, who will return to conclude the long-planned theatrical trilogy, said Emmerich. On HBO Max, anticipation of Wonder Woman 1984 was apparent with the nearly half of the platform's retail subscribers viewing the film on the day of its arrival, along with millions of wholesale subscribers who have access to HBO Max via cable, wireless, or other partner services. Half. That's incredible. HBO Max also saw the total viewing hours on Friday more than triple in comparison to a typical day in the previous month. Wonder Woman 1984 broke records and exceeded our expectations across all of our key viewing and subscriber metrics in its first 24 hours on the service. And the interest and momentum we're seeing indicates this will likely continue well beyond the weekend, said Andy Forsell, executive vice president and general manager of Warner Media Direct to Consumer. During these very difficult times, it was nice to give families the option of enjoying this uplifting film at home where theater viewing 
wasn't an option. And then further along, they just talk about how there's private screenings and things like that. Uh, and only 39% of U.S. cinemas representing 56% of the box office was actually open at, and they were at, open at limited capacity. So post pandemic, this they're saying is the biggest box office opening, box office opening for this year, post uh, in this pandemic period, right? Pop post pandemic, whatever. Uh, so uh, that is amazing. So definitely this experiment of theatrical and HBO Max was indeed a success. Now, um, this is amazing that they actually fast tracked Wonder Woman 3 green lit right from out of the out of the gate with these numbers, despite uh, there was some division within the fandom in terms of their reaction towards uh, Wonder Woman 1984, looks like the numbers are speaking for themselves, and they're seeing the numbers, and they're like, "This is it. This is good. Wonder Woman three is definitely a possibility. It is going to happen uh, with Patty Jenkins writing and directing the movie." Now, uh, I also think that them accepting that uh, the next one will definitely be a theatrical movie probably played a little bit into that. Like I said before in my other uh, videos, that Patty Jenkins, uh, in order to do a Wonder Woman 3, she wants it to be a theatrical model. She's very much in line with theatrical model. We'll see if that actually happens later on. I still think it will. I think this is a good sign that people are still going to watch things in theaters. Um, and uh, as we get more, you know, the vaccine becomes more readily available, um, you know, depending on the different strains, whatever. I think um, at a certain point, this will still be, be a viable thing. Um, Although HBO Max subscribers having half of them watch it is amazing, uh, and I think as with and that's just the first day one, you know the the other half probably watched it several days after. But I think uh, this is a big deal, and I think 2021 is definitely going to be lit. <laughs> definitely is going to be lit, um, and I'll get more into that in terms of of Zack Snyder's Justice League and what this could mean for that as well. But that's a uh, pretty, pretty damn impressive. But I want to get into like, okay, Wonder Woman 3 is happening. What is going to happen in Wonder Woman 3? They, it, it was known that it was going to be set in present time, you know, and there's probably going to be some sort of message there. Uh, as, you know, Patty Jenkins and Gowden had a watch party. It's really her just tweeting. I thought there was going to be a live and you actually see them talking, but no. Uh, she was just tweeting along as people watch the movie. But she does explain the message that she had for each of the films. And I'm thinking, and it makes me wonder what her third film's message is going to be. Uh, she said the first movie is about being brave enough to still find love. Despite the flaws of mankind, the second film is about being brave enough to face the truth and choose others even when it would be easier to be selfish. So it makes me wonder, okay, what's the third message there? Because the third message is going to be uh, essentially present day or at least the year that uh, this movie is going to come out or around the same year. Um, I'm wondering what that is brave enough to what you know so it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting and in what how she ties it all together all three movies together in a certain fashion a certain way um and definitely i'm very curious if she takes in the factor of what happens in zack snyder's just like that that would be uh one of the key things that, like a lot of us fans are going to wonder uh, and definitely who's going to be the villain. Um, they seem to hint that um, Barbara Minerva will be back, possibly, right? And thank you for the question. We'll just have to wait and see in terms of is Barbara's story done or will we see her again in the future? So um, no spoilers here, hopefully. But, you know, I yeah, kind of insinuated something there that Cheetah may still be around. Um, I would definitely, uh, even Gal Gadot says, uh, first she can't share much, but happy to hear your thoughts about Wonder Woman 1984. It does sound like there could be a possibility that uh, she could return in the future. And I'll talk all about that in the spoilers discussion for Wonder Woman 1984. Grace Randolph put something out. She talks a little bit about Wonder Woman 3, um, uh, insinuating that Cersei could 
be a, a villain in Wonder Woman 3, um, turn Barbara back into Cheetah, maybe. Um, and also, this is interesting that she's hearing Flashpoint might bring Steve back again. Now, we know about her situation, about a, a certain story she put out or a video she put out where she said that Wonder Woman 1984 was going to be the Flashpoint and they're going to change the DCU. Um that didn't happen. No, <laughs> okay, that didn't happen. So I don't know what was up with that, but I guess if you really think about it, doing some of the things that happened in, in that movie, um, if changed, could have actually did something and you know changed the timeline. But it didn't happen, didn't happen. So, but she's also hearing that flashpoint uh could bring Steve back again like they're actually doing making previs uh for for that situation and i i really hope not like i i hope not i mean like it was cool bringing it back it, it served the purpose i don't know if bringing it back again would even serve another purpose or something but i think it may just get a little old so i don't know and if it's going to be a flashpoint let's just keep it mostly flash with some cameos right let's keep the story mostly flash uh but yeah bring in the batman the superman's but, but you know smaller minor roles supporting roles um so i don't know if you would need steve to bring, bring back but like i said she you know, it didn't happen. <laughs> so I don't think that Flashpoint thing's happening. Sorry, Grace. I, I don't really. That's kind of weird. Okay. So, but Wonder Woman 3 has been greenlit. I think we should be pretty ecstatic about that. I know a lot of you uh, who are happy with Wonder Woman 1984 aren't really ecstatic about that. I'm pretty ecstatic about that. Um, like I said in my review, Wonder Woman 1984 wasn't an action movie for me. The first one was. This one. I enjoyed the aspects that weren't actually action, which is weird, right? You're like, well, it's a superhero movie, man. Why, why aren't you enjoying that? Yeah, it, you know, the final action battle uh, with what you see in the trailer where you see Wonder Woman versus Cheetah was probably the best action piece out of the whole thing, um, aside from the, uh, you know, the Amazons um, in the beginning. But aside from that, like, it's the story, I think, um, and how it's put together and the emotions that came out uh, from me um, made it uh, very enjoyable in that fact. So the character developed, uh, the characters uh, made it uh, enjoyable for that. But more on that in my spoilers discussion. But stuff to say, Wonder Woman 3 is happening. It's happening. So let me know down below. Do you want to see it in present day? Do you want it to be in the future? Someone even mentioned like one woman 2049. I'm like, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, a dystopian, futuristic Wonder Woman? Yeah, man. Why not? She's like, what? She won't grow old anyway. So that'd be kind of cool to go past that time. Maybe throw in some Justice Lord Superman, you know, Batman Beyond. Wow. That would be pretty cool. I don't know if that's going to happen. But uh, Wonder Woman 3 is definitely greenlit. Uh, very excited to see, uh, you know, after Patty's done with Cleopatra and Rogue Squadron and all that, to see where she goes uh, ahead with Wonder Woman 3. All right. So I want to talk about the EC Films now. You know, since we're on that matter, there is this certain article that came out from the New York Times, and it's about the current DC film plans from Walter Amada. Um, this is going to trigger a lot of people, I think. I think. The New York Times, there he is, Walter Hamada. DC Films, led by Walter Hamada, plans to release movies featuring DC comic heroes like Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman at a much faster pace. So th there's a lot of information uh, to come from here, but I'm just going to zoom in to certain uh, things that st stood out to me in terms. And, and a lot of these things are like, there are comments from Walter Hamada, but there are also almost opinions from Brooks Barnes. So it's very hard to decipher which is his opinion, which is he's believed is true and what he actually got from Walter Amata. But uh, Walter Amata, president of DC Films, he said this, the most expensive DC movies up to four a year starting in 2022 are designed for release in theaters uh, and also additional superhero films. Two annually is the goal 
perhaps focus on riskier characters like Batgirl and Static Shock. So like that's this part, I don't know if it's an opinion or is that what he actually said, will arrive exclusively on HBO Max, the fledgling streaming service uh, owned by Warner Media. In addition, which is part of Warner Brothers, they will work with filmmakers to develop movie offshoots, TV series that will run on HBO Max and interconnect with the big screen endeavors. You've seen that, Peacemaker, Suicide Squad, Gotham PD, um, The Batman, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, with every movie that we're looking at now, we are thinking, what's the potential Max spinoff? So they are definitely going to look more into uh, those characters, right? But to make all the storylines work, DC Films will introduce movie audiences to a comics concept known as the multiverse. We know this. Parallel worlds where a different version of the same character exists simultaneously. Coming up, for instance, Warner Brothers will have two different film sagas involving Batman played by two different character actors running at the same time. Like that says, he, I don't know who which batman they're talking about um they don't say i'm not sure if that is actually um robert pattinson's batman or michael keaton's batman or ben affleck's batman so actually the answer to that question about which batman is which is right here the answer is the multiverse boiled down and means that some characters wonder woman as portrayed by miss Godot, for instance will continue their adventures on earth one while new incarn incarnations mr pattison as the batman will populate earth two like i said don't know if this is an opinion or actually something from mr hamada himself um they said that to figure out how to make the various storylines and characters incarnations coexist or start over and in this case they're not going to start over they're going to make them coexist by having these multiple universes if you will uh the flash a film set for release in theaters in 2022 will link the two universes and feature two batmans so that's interesting because it just the paragraph before they're saying the first earth is uh robert pattinson and the sec well the second earth is robert pattinson sorry and the first earth would be actually you know uh, ben affleck's batman but in this paragraph it says that the two universes feature two batmans mr affleck is returning as one and michael keaton is returning as the other with no mention of robert pattinson's batman mr keaton played batman 1989 1992 so very confusing indeed um unless it's true that Michael Keaton's Batman will definitely have his own spinoff in which that they were going to do that, you know, Batman Beyond, uh, if you will. Then that could be one another universe. But I, I don't know if they're insinuating that Ben Affleck's Batman will continue as an Earth One because it makes sense because that's where Miss Godot, you know, Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman inhabits. And the next Earth will be Robert Pattinson's Batman. I still think Robert Pattinson's Batman is no more than a trilogy, um, and there is actually nothing like that. And I think in their own mind, it's just so that they can process that, oh, okay, there's multiple Batman. So don't know about that. This is the part that triggered a lot of people, and I want to talk about it. So he says, to complicate matters further, HBO Max gave Mr. Snyder more than $70 million to recut his Justice League and expand it with new footage. Mr. Snyder and Warner Brothers had clashed over his original vision, which the studio deemed overly grim, and resulting in reshoots handled by a different director, Joss Whedon. That didn't go well either. Zack Snyder's Justice League, now four hours long, will arrive in segments on HBO Max in March. At least for now, Mr. Snyder is not part of the new DC Films blueprint, with studio executives describing his HBO Max project as a storytelling uh, cul-de-sac, a street that leads nowhere. Okay. Um, and at the end, it says this, I don't think anyone else has ever attempted this. The multiverse, right? Mr. Hamada said, but audiences are sophisticated enough to understand it. If we make good movies, they will go with it. In fact, they'll probably make more. So let's talk about that. I've been seeing this thing going around called Restore the Snyderverse. Restore the Snyderverse. And I agree. Um, that'd be fantastic. That'd be great. What is the Snyderverse? Uh, to me, the Snyderverse is this all the God shirt here. Like this, this to me kind of re represents for me and probably to zach as well 
the Snyderverse, right? Um, and, and to me, this is just like a map of the vision, uh, the original vision in certain aspects, and uh, really is like uh, essentially like Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, uh, Justice League 1, 2, and 3, or Zack Snyder's Justice League 1, 2, and 3, that's the Snyderverse. He said that's his, that's his con continuity, that's his Snyderverse, right? This is the Snyderverse. How do we restore the Snyderverse, right? When you go back to the words he said here, when it's two studio, with studio executives describing, and, and you know, seriously, this studio executives, again, you know, the same studio executives said the Snyder Cut does not exist and blah, blah, blah. But they're kind of not, the, yes, this is a negative tone, a street that leads nowhere because that's a cul-de-sac. It, it's a cul-de-sac because it just goes in and that's it. That's all there is to it. In a way, they're not, they're not wrong. Okay, because the Snyderverse really is Zack Snyder's own thing. That's his own. It seems like he never went beyond Justice League three. Like that was it. That was like he was that he was only doing the five part arc. That's all he cared about. That's all he was going to do. That's it. I mean, he could be producer of all these other things. That's cool. But for the most part, he's letting those directors do their own thing. And that's why Wonder Woman 1984 is not going to look like. You know anything like Batman v Superman and things like that? He's let he let Patty Jenkins do her own thing. You know he says if they're if they're he's if they're gonna let him do his own thing, he's gonna have to let another director do their own thing. It's only it's only fair. But um, the Snyderverse is this right, and a lot of people want to restore it. There's only one way we can restore this. There's only one way. You gotta watch Zack Snyder's Justice League. In 20 next year, in a few months, you gotta watch the living F out of Zack Snyder's Justice League. I don't care where you are, I don't care if you're on your phone, I don't care if you're on your streaming service, I don't care if you're on the PlayStation, I don't care where you are, I don't care if you're on the computer. You watch the living F out of Zack Snyder's Justice League. That's the only way we can communicate. To those Warner Brother folks that we want to see more of that views. Look how quickly, look how uh, fast, how just like today, the weekend of Wonder Woman 1984 being released, the weekend of... They just fast track Wonder Woman 3. Look how quick that was. They instantly saw the numbers. They instantly saw like half the subscribers on day one. Just when I'm going to go watch Wonder Woman 1984 over and over and over. And, you know, just how successful this experiment was. Zack Snyder's Justice League is going to blow it out of the water. It's going to blow the statistics out of the water. And it's all up to us. You want to restore the Snyderverse? It's not going to take hashtags and tweets. Um, definitely that will help drive the conversation. But the most important thing that you can do to even, even think or remotely even want to restore the Snyderverse is you watch this mother effing film on day one the entire weekend over and over and over you share you tell people to watch you tell people to subscribe to HMAX. max you get this baby successful on that opening weekend who knows they may just say zach snyder we just green lit your justice league 2 maybe even justice league 3 you know but especially the sequel, you know, one at a time, maybe. Okay, we we Chris Greenlit Justice League Two. We're fast tracking Justice League Two. We're gonna have Toby Emmerich having to write up a little quote on Warner Media and says, as fans around the world continue to embrace Zack Snyder's vision, driving the strong opening weekend performance of Zack Snyder's Justice League. We are excited to be able to continue his story with our real-life superheroes, Zack Snyder and Chris Terrio and Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill and Gal Gadot and Jason Momoa and Ray Fisher and Ezra Miller 
and so many and so many more who will return to conclude the long planned trilogy that is Zack Snyder's Just League. This is the only way they'll listen. This is the only way right now that matters. We got them to release the Snyder Cut. Now we have to show them that it was the right decision, it was the right move, and it's to make it as some freaking successful as possible. This is the only way. The only way. Watch Zack Snyder's Just League and tell everybody, your neighbors, your classmate, your dog, <laughs> I don't know, just to turn on the damn Zack Snyder's Just League and let's restore the Snyderverse together. So that's what I want to tell you, that just seeing how fast they fast-tracked Wonder Woman 3, seeing these numbers, and being, they're being proud of what had happened on HBO Max, this is the next step. This is the next step, okay? This is the next DC film out of the gate. This is the one that we want to see. Let's make it happen. Let's prove to them that they didn't just throw away $70 million. They invested in the vision. And then one day we can probably get this whole epic thing. Please, please, let's watch it together. Please. So let's make it happen. Let's make it count 2021. Let's do this. Let's restore the Snyderverse. This is the way to do it. Uh, and, and a way to just kind of, you know, uh, get us more excited, uh, definitely for this upcoming year. Justice Con 2021 was announced. This is coming from the Nerd Queens is also a Wonder Meg as well. We have a little short clip here of us opening up the present and yeah it's tease but you know you can see it right there it says jc it's 2021 like this roar that says justice con 2021 featuring zach snyder of course afsp justice con symbol there ink to the people so there's gonna be some shirts that's gonna be awesome um they also released uh zach snyder himself uh, Justice Con 2021. Excited to take part in this coming year. Let's take a deep dive. You know, um, or you can see that last part. Let's take a deep dive. Justice Con 2021. So Nerd Queens has a uh, frequently asked question. They have this little thing out here that I'm going to read to you. That's right. Justice Con is returning in 2021. And the boss, Zack Snyder, will be there with us. Now to answer some frequently asked questions. When? Shortly after the release of Zack Snyder's Justice League, we will have a date for you. Where? Virtual. So the world can participate once again, hosted on YouTube. Who? Working on that? We'll let you know. Any additional hosts? We have already tapped an elite team to help us host Justice Con 2021. Details will be shared at a later date. What is Justice Con? Of course, as you know, a virtual convention made by Zack Snyder, DC Comics fans for Zack Snyder and DC Comics fans. Who is running this? They are running this. So they're incredibly honored to be teaming up with their bestie, Wonder Meg. Once again, uh, they are definitely, oops, can't even see that. They are running this uh, Justice Con. So very exciting stuff happening next year. Not only are we going to get Zack Snyder's Justice League, we're going to get a Justice Con. Hey, hey, who knows? And no promises. But if this is coming after Zack Snyder's Justice League and we got the green lit on the Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 and 3, come on, man. This is going to be this is going to be fabulous. It's going to be uh, fan-freaking-tastic. So it's it's going to be awesome. And so Justice Con 2021, I can't wait for that. But a lot of it, you know, like like everybody else here, I'm really intrigued and, and excited um, for what's going to happen with DC Films. But starting out right out the gate, 2021 starts off with Zack Snyder's Justice League. So um, let's get it done, guys. Let's get it done. 
All right. Well, let's now let's get on to um, the Ping Pong Flicks members' comments and questions. Um, I think I'm gonna, you know, concentrate on two videos. Um, the one before the weekend where you guys commented on, uh, and then also the one that with uh, my Joker editorial. By the way, check out my Joker editorial. I worked pretty hard on that one. It was it's fun and awesome to do. I can't wait to do more. But please check it out. Share it. Like it. Um, and so on and so forth. But yeah, if you want to put a comment or a question down in this video and I'll read it in the next video, please join down as a member down below. All right, let's get on with the comments and questions. The first one's from Brandon Hayes. Grace Randolph just interviewed Zack Snyder and he did some comparison shots and showed more finished VFX shots for his Snyder Cut. The new stuff looks so much better. It's interesting because Zack reveals more about the movie too. Apparently, Wonder Woman is the glue that holds the team together and there's a scene in the film where she talks to Aquaman about his motivation. In the film, Aquaman hates the Atlanteans, the Atlantean culture, and the Atlantean royalty. I'm honestly excited because we'll be getting a better portrayal of Aquaman, a more deep, impactful, and grounded story with better visuals and not a goofy neon paradise underwater full of dodgy CGI. You really don't like Aquaman. Uh, Zach also mentions that VFX team is thankful for the opportunity to go back and work under him to finish what they had started on Justice League and that start uh, but working on the Snyder Cut has been very... Cathartic, uh, cathartic for them. I guess they were too. They too were abused badly under Weedem. Zach reveals that when he stepped away, they were sixty percent done with their work, and when Joss took over, they were forced to literally ditch the work they had done and start from scratch and submit VFX shots that were unfished that looked like video game cutscenes and not shots meant for a motion picture. I guess they were too embarrassed by Warner Brother Pictures because they took the blame for the bad-looking Henry Cavill CGI mouth and the awful-looking Steppenwolf and everything else. You also have to remember that they only had six months to complete that, and they shortcut so many things. Uh, Big Rooster, Wonder Woman 184 was ruined because of Jeff Johns. I don't believe Pat Jenkins would make a movie with so much cringe. You know, there's a thing about that. I don't know which parts Jeff Johns wrote. And if that's the cringy parts, that would be kind of interesting. So I'm wondering about the next movie. Is Jeff Johns, will Jeff Johns be involved in the next film? Currently, uh, in terms of the statement from Warner Brothers, it's just Patty Jenkins writing and directing. But let's see if she'll utilize the story she did with Jeff Johns, as you said before. Uh, Hardboiled Entertainment. I love to see Peter Jackson doing something for the DCEU. Were he to do JL Dark, I can easily see Andy Serkis as Etrigan the Demon, but I could also see Peter Jackson, Peter Jackson doing a Hawkman, Hawkgirl film, or a Martian Manhunter set on Mars doing his past as a planetary cop or a marshal. Uh, to your point, without about other big filmmakers coming in, it would be really cool to see Catherine Bigelow coming in to direct something. Nowadays, we know her war films and serious stuff, but lest we forget, she was also the director who gave us the original Point Break, so she's certainly capable of giving us a genre uh, flick. Yeah, if she definitely wants to come in and do some stuff, that would be pretty awesome. So IMAX is excited, but oh, but this is about one and three. Well, now we know that Patty Jenkins is back. Uh, so IMAX is excited about Zach's next next big project. Not new or anything indicating current. Hmm, almost looks like they're teasing something to come. What could it be? Um, Merry Christmas, all 12 days and beyond. Well, thank you so much, Eric Blake. Merry Christmas to you as well. Uh, I think they were teasing Zack Snyder's Justice League because they retweeted Zack Snyder's you know, tweet about Zack Snyder's Justice League in IMAX theaters. Amparo, and Merry Christmas, Chris. Wishing you a very magical Christmas in the company of your family and Wonder Woman. Well, Merry Christmas to you uh, as well, Amparo. Thank you so much. Uh, Merry Christmas to Bowl of Indo Me as well. Thank you. Um, I was hoping for some Wonder Woman, Cheetah, and Steve character packs for Fortnite as promo, but has ha hasn't happened yet. Yeah, you know that would have been smart. I don't know why it's Green Arrow. It's Wonder Woman 1984. I mean, even I, I, the Wonder Woman 1984 is even on Injustice too. What's up with that? Uh, Carlos N. Mahalo, Chris. Thank you so much for helping to keep the spirit of DCU's fandom alive through 2020. Your daily updates have been a ray of sun in a dark year, and they've been hugely appreciated. Just want to wish your family and all the members of PP Flakes a great Xmas and a very happy, healthy 2021. Well, thank you so much, Carlos N. I uh, truly appreciate, appreciate it. And yes, um, uh, uh, Merry Christmas <laughs> um, to you and your and Happy New Year. And in Hawaiian, it's actually Mele Kalikimaka. So, yes, 
definitely thank you so much. All right, so that was that video. Now I'm going to go on to the next one, which was the Joker's editorial. Like I said, I'm going to save the your comments and questions that you had for my Wonder Woman review uh, for the spoilers discussion because I, I have a feeling, I haven't read it yet, but I have a feeling there's going to be some spoilers in those comments, and I want to keep it in one uh, box, if, if you will. Um, El Necra, love this edit, these editorials. Keep them coming. Thank you. I, I Thank you. I, I glad, I'm really happy that you like love them. I uh, love your pun with Heath Ledger's aggressive expansion line, as in expanded multiverse. Yeah, that's I was kind of I heard that and I was I kind of put that in right there because it, it just makes uh, it just makes sense. I, I originally had the ones where he says let's have some tryouts, but I, I took that out because it's there is no tryouts. It's like whatever works, they're going to continue making it right. So thank you for noticing that. That's awesome, Brandon Hayes. Um, I'll be that Jared Leto's performance was just as good as Joaquin's in Joker. By the way, I love Zack Snyder's mind. He's so brilliant. Why? Oh, why did Warner Bros. ruin his great plan? They suck. I'm happy he's finishing his Snyder Cut, but it's all damage control. The air cut will come out, but we should have had it already. It's all damage control. Warner Bros. has become a studio that other studios laugh at and go, okay, let's do the opposite of what they're doing. Hey, uh, I agree, it's damage control, but at least they're doing it, right? There's, an, I don't think other any other studio has ever done that, right? So I think at least, at the least, at the very least, they are doing it, uh, and maybe these restored Snyderverse as well. Mike G, great vid, Chris. Thank you so much, Mike G. Uh, absolutely appreciate it. Brent T. Wilson, hey Chris, great video as always, and I really enjoyed this editorial. I'm a huge Joker Batman fan, as most of us are. Thank you so much, Brent. On a slightly separate topic, I've noticed a lot of negativity towards Wonder Woman 1984. I wonder what your thoughts on this uh, on this is. I have a feeling Jeff Johns has struck again, and his input has negatively affected the film. Surely the 80s Donner S style is from Johns. He did get his start working with Donner himself, I believe. I really don't think the fans want the lighthearted campiness anymore, especially in the live-action DC movies. It worked in the 80s and 90s, I guess, for Marvel more recently, but I feel fans want dark, complex, mature stories for DC films. Look at Joker and Zack Snyder's Justice League. I'm also seeing a lot of people say now, I think after Wonder Woman 1984, I won't watch Zack Snyder's Justice League. I don't trust DC. Well, that sucks. I hope they're really not really seeing, saying, actually saying that. My partner and I loved uh, Wonder Woman 1984. It's not perfect, but it was great in our opinion uh, and for many reasons. Like I said, I love Wonder Woman 1984 as well, but I'm going to be honest, the action scenes that you're talking about where it had that lot of weird, these 80s campiness, was not the highlight of that movie. The highlight of that movie was actually the characters' arcs, especially um, like Pedro Pascal and Kristen Wiig, or you know Barbara Nerver, you know, and and actually Wonder Woman herself, uh, and the lessons that she learned from this, right? Because her character remained camp. P campiness less, you know. She she remained the character that we knew and loves uh, from Wonder Woman one, even in you know Batman v Superman. So um, she remained the same. Um, you know, there are the scenes that you're talking about. I agree; those were like not for everybody. Um, I don't hate it. It's just it didn't impress me. Um, they the, those action scenes were just kind of like really but i get it in the 80s that would have been acceptable um and i get why she shot it the way she shot because she wanted to make it look like an 80s action flick but maybe some of that don't translate well to here i do agree that maybe like you know they should have got david caro or or you know have zach snyder help out with some of the action at least just like he did in the first movie you know that would have been cool but um right the the thing that i love about worm 19 for and i'll save that for the spoilers discussion what has nothing to do with the action scenes it has nothing to do with the action scenes which is weird like you said comic book movie no nah, nah, nah. <laughs> so um but yeah i definitely will go into it further uh nathaniel goodoman a very cool video chris love it looking forward for more furiosa's one as well bro congrats and please continue for us i would definitely will uh continue with that as well like i've said if you haven't seen it yet i'm, I'm doing something different for uh other movies out of dc is called uh, genre etc the first one was about Furiosa when they announced that Furiosa was coming out in 2023. I said, I love Mad Max. I love Mad Max Fury Road. I love that world. I definitely wanted to do a little video about that. But how do I keep it out of DC? And so I found out another playlist 
called genre etc so it's a little two minute something uh check it out i have it up um the link is going to be up there on the top right hand corner if you can see it uh, or check out my videos uh, my latest upload videos but also check out my joker video as well that one took me all day to make it so hopefully people get to watch that i wanted to make it like a joker tribute to all the different past and present and possibly nightmare future joker um all in one but mostly about the films right the film the movie jokers and and with you do see snippets of uh, the cartoon animated and video game and even you know um uh even the gotham one as well so but definitely check that out i would truly appreciate that and um that's pretty much it that's pretty much it uh, for today thank you so much for watching like i said if you absolutely love this daily dose of dc content and movie shows and video games please click the like button hit that subscribe button ring that notification bell keep this hot dog light on grab a t-shirt down teespring down below and i'll see you next time